as I promised, I will not uh, take a lot of time. So I start with the um, yeah with the description of the uh, topic and uh, the topic of our work. The, the its project is a part so, some small part of the bigger project that is done in Kazan Federal University in collaboration with Annapolis University, a big group. And we uh, actually, uh, the result of this is actually development of the Rolingua uh, system that is um, also uh, like includes some of the contributions from, from the research of, the, of our group. But our main uh, topic of this talk uh, today, for, for my, my goal today, is to present an uh, experiment from the assessment of text complexity or readability related to uh, school books in uh, three levels. And um, of course, there is a motivation behind this, uh, like practical approach, uh, practical ideas, uh, practical things implemented in this Rolingua system. And uh, in uh, theoretically, of course, there are many things that are uh, already done and uh, they are useful in different uh, domains, including educational domain for academic text analysis, uh, complexity analysis, and readability analysis. Reading comprehension. I will not uh, list all of the applications. Uh, it's uh, the goal of our team is to study academic complexity uh, in the text, in academic texts. And uh, uh, for, for to this end, uh, we collected a big corpus, but before that, I'll just discuss uh, readability is it's a uh, well-known idea coming like maybe uh, for already known for several decades at least. So there is a score that can be assigned to text that de defined either on the scale of uh, like from zero to hundred and more uh, or from just the grade level. And uh, the, the goal of the tools for readability analysis is to uh, estimate uh, for each fragments, fragment of text or for, for the whole book to estimate this uh, scores, like for which grade of the school it's uh, appropriate. There are many other applications. Uh, you can uh, rank, uh, for instance, rank some uh, texts that are official, like speech of uh, presidents from the United States or some other texts. You can uh, you know, rank them according to this uh, scale. Uh, and yeah, one of these, uh, the, the most, uh, the well-known uh, formula is a flash Kincaid formula in two variants. It has, uh, in both variants, uh, in the top two formulas, you have two parameters. The first parameter is uh, ASL, it's uh, average uh, sentence length. And the uh, second parameter is the uh, average uh, syllables per word or word length. So this formula was adopted by Obrunio for Russian. Um, it has some predictive uh, power. It, it was used, it is used and it's good uh, to apply. Our group uh, later improved this result. <clears throat> Because uh, the, for, the Obernio formula was just uh, uh, approximation. We built a new version of this, uh, like uh, trained on a uh, school text corpus. It was collected. I will talk about this a bit later. <clears throat> of course, there are other many formulas. The more complicated formulas, uh, it's still ongoing process. You can also use uh, pre-trained language models to uh, estimate the text readability and use any, uh, you, you can use um, all kinds of estimators, all kinds of lexical features or syntactical features. There is a bunch of research on this uh, also for Russian. Um, we focus on some simple formula just because um, like linear regression, just because we are aimed at uh, some audience in uh, groups of uh, teachers, groups of uh, educators who 
uh, want to have a simple interpretation of the results of estimation. So for each formula, you get some score. And in order to understand what's happening, you should, uh, you should, you should explain the result, which is uh, not that easy with uh, pre-trained language models or neural networks. This is why we explored a very simple uh, models first. <clears throat> so as I said, this um, improved uh, version, it will call F slash Kincaid great with simple, with additional uh, subscript SIS. Uh, it's a, a different uh, coefficients, but the same set of features. Uh, again, two features with different uh, uh, coefficients. And it, uh, the, the coefficients were, were fitted on the um, school, uh, school textbooks. But this corpus initially was um, uh, assembled and it included the high, uh, high grade, uh, the, the school, school books from uh, high school, uh, like starting from fifth grade till 11th. So its uh, performance on the uh, elementary school is uh, not very good. So later on in this, in this it's in the current study, we presented the results for the bigger trained on the big corpus and also appropriate for uh, elementary school. Because this, this formula is just uh, doesn't work well for elementary school. So the, uh, the data set here is uh, a new data set collected for, by a group in Kazan Federal University. It has uh, 154 school books. So you can see the distributions of number of uh, textbooks, uh, number of um, tokens. And it includes the grades from second till 11th and the number of subjects, uh, several subjects. So here, the, just to let you know what is the distribution of subjects among grade levels. So you can see some subjects are actually the, do not cover uh, the whole so the whole uh, range of uh, grades, but uh, uh, it's more, more or less uh, represented. All the grades are represented more or less uh, equally. Uh, so the, then we just analyze the sentence length. So we work with two parameters first, and the next part of the talk will be about the third parameter that is frequency parameter. So this, uh, the first part we analyzed, you can see the clear, the co correlation between the sentence length or average sentence length and the grade level. But uh, take, a, take a look at this, uh, again, elementary school. So for f second, third and fourth grade, you can see these bar plots are kind of overlapping to each other. And that's uh, actually an issue that we found that in, also in a properly co collected set of uh, school books, uh, this uh, feature is uh, not that uh, predictive, not that good for prediction. Uh, the same, maybe even worse for word length. We calculate word length in symbols, uh, but uh, the same happens if you calculate in syllables, uh, they, they highly correlate to each other. The, for for this study, we calculated uh, uh, metric this this parameter in terms of uh, symbols. And again, you can see this um, mixture of uh, second to fourth grade um, that we consider elementary school, and um, that's kind of a problem. So the idea is to first to try to uh, analyze this to understand how this problem is can be solved. So we try to build the um, simple model with two parameters that it already described, and then fit and uh, evaluate it on different subsets of books. So this second to fourth grade, and fifth to seven, and eight to nine, uh, and to eight to 11, and uh, then on all the books. So despite that the, there is improvement over the previous version that is in the uh, last line of the table, uh, you can see that there is a significant improvement in terms of uh, average error, mean average error. 
and so on, but um, there is a still uh, trouble with this uh, separation of different types of books, different grades that you can see on the scatter plot, uh, different uh, books, uh, different grade levels are presented with different colors. And on this uh, two parameter space, uh, uh, it's, it's hard to distinguish between the, the different uh, separate books, uh, se se separate grade levels. So it's a problem for practical application of the formula. And the idea was to try to resolve this somehow and approach it with a, and adding new feature that might be um, somehow useful. And the, the common feature for this uh, is the frequency, which is a very good feature for readability formulas uh, that we explored before in other studies. Um, then we uh, assembled, uh, we calculated two types of frequency. So the first one is uh, based on the special vocabulary that is related to elementary uh, school books. This vocabulary was not uh, assembled on our set of uh, books in, in the corpus, but it was independently collected and uh, built. Uh, so we take these uh, words from the intersection of these uh, different books from the second, third, and fourth grades. And then uh, the, the, these words are kind of a, 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 around uh, 4,000 words. So we selected them using the uh, filtering, using the uh, Julian uh, coefficient. And the, the feature is uh, just uh, how we calculate the feature. We take the word from the our book, like in, in the test set or in train set, and uh, take uh, take a look uh, look up in that vocabulary, the frequency vocabulary, um, and then average, of course. And um, the frequency uh, number two that is uh, based on the common lexicon. That is a well-known uh, frequency list uh, assembled, created by uh, Sharov and Lashevska. And these two features, you can see that they both have this negative correlation coefficients with the number of grade. So this is a, this table in the bottom of the slide, slide uh, presents the Pearson correlation. And uh, the strength of correlation is not that big. And uh, as you can see uh, later, the, uh, the frequency features actually not that also important for the target problem, not that useful. Um, but uh, for if you, if, if, you, if, you, if you try to uh, find the correlation, calculate the correlation between the uh, frequency and the grade level for the range between second and the 11th grade, the correlation is uh, quite big, I would say. Not, not that strong, but still like minus uh, 0 0.5, let's see. Okay, uh, the next step was to um, model, uh, build a model with these uh, several level, levels of uh, complex, uh, several levels of uh, textbooks. Uh, so we have range between of the grade level between second and fourth grade, and fifth and seventh, and, and eighth and eleven as was before. And uh, here you you can see in the table you can see the MSC and MAE errors again. Um, uh, the point is that the, the, there is a not that much difference between the frequency uh, contribution and uh, which is uh, which is more. What is more interesting here is that the comparison to the model, comparing to the model with two parameters, this additional feature uh, doesn't uh, improve uh, performance in terms of the error. Um, so um, this, uh, this is just a representation of the coefficients that we de derived uh, from, from our experiments. So this is, uh, you can see the first coefficient is a constant and the constant is, uh, that's interesting that this A0 coefficient is somehow adjusted to the mean value of the, uh, for, for, for the grade, uh, for the second, fourth and the 
fifth to seven, it's uh, uh, fitted to the uh, mean value of the grade, and the other coefficients are very um, close to what we expect. And the, in, for the for the global model in the in the last column, you can see that the the coefficients actually very close to what we had before. Uh, so um, this is a, the, the formula with two parameters is obviously works well, um, not only for the uh, all grade levels, but also for subsets, sub ranges, sub levels of this data set. Um, but what, for the three parameters, we have um, somewhat uh, different results, and they are not that. Uh, of course, we can report them and say, okay, the, the, this is a formula of three parameters. You can use this. Uh, the, the point is that um, maybe it's not that robust. Uh, it provides not, not, not that robust results. So as a conclusion to this uh, topic, I would to this uh, uh, study, uh, we prepare the following. So the formulas are actually the best for uh, assessing complexity for academic texts for Russian. Um, right now, maybe there are some better formula in the future or for other languages. Mm, yeah, we recommend to use simplest formula with two features, uh, also for distinguishing between the uh, elementary school grades. And yeah, these separate formulas are uh, possibly to apply if you have some additional information. So if you already know that this is a uh, school text or fragment of a text that is um, for the elementary school, so you can use the specific formula. It will give you better results in, in, than just a bigger regression formula for fitted or trained on, on the whole uh, textbooks. And yeah, we, we still uh, believe to uh, to this uh, in this uh, frequency dictionary for school uh, books, and uh, that might be might have different applications. So actually, not just uh, uh, improvement of the readability, but the uh, dictionary and frequency dictionary for elementary school texts uh, can can have different other applications, a set of applications actually. Uh, that's uh, it for. Uh, my talk. I have some time for questions. I hope you have questions. Just some acknowledgements and uh, yeah, questions. Uh, so I uh, have a question. It's maybe not like entirely about your uh, your research, the current research you're describing, but the uh, whole uh, whole line of research. Mm. You're uh, describing uh, the readability formulas, which are using the linear combination of uh, two or three features. Uh, is it, uh, is it uh, I don't know, uh, enough for readability? It seems, uh, for me at least, uh, I have a really small, uh, small input for, for this uh, area, but uh, it seems that um, for many of many of three features uh, they have maybe some not linear elasticity if we use the term from uh, economics so maybe the uh, higher values of some feature are not uh, like working the same as lower values maybe some non-linearity is pre presented inside the uh, the idea of this um, readability itself because when you showed the um, the graph with uh, dots uh, for for yeah this, this one it seems that there is no linear dependency here for at least for for me maybe i don't see it due to uh i don't know uh, not enough uh, not not enough uh, time to look at it but uh, how do you think about non-linear formulas yeah we discussed it uh, with our colleagues in in our group uh, first of all, there is uh, there should be some motivation behind this, some scientific uh, 
motivation and your your idea i uh, i understand your idea that for some uh, borderline values or features there could be not a linear dependency at all but maybe some decay or some should be introduced or something like this but um yeah and here the clear example that we have uh, i i wouldn't say that is uh, there is some linear connection or uh, relation here that you can uh, capture for the elementary school that is uh, for me it's just a different uh, the problem here is not in the uh, functional form of the model but maybe in the set of features and uh, switching to complete completely different uh, approach may resolve this uh, mess in the elementary school um, texts may not i don't know but uh, for me it's clear that that short sentences with short words may appear in the range of second uh, first second and fourth grades of course maybe it's just a problem not in the linear linearity but in the set of features that should be reconsidered somehow and and of course we we we, we played with a lot of features like syntactical features part of speech um, not for this specific corpus, but previously a different corpus. And yeah, the, the, there are some features that are useful. But the problem that you, when you increase number of features, this interpretation uh, power decreases. You, you, you should somehow explain it in simple words to teachers, educators, I don't know, school teachers why this and that result and it's much harder if you have like 10 features with parts of speeches or i don't know syntactical dependencies inside the text and that's that's kind of trade-off uh, but the linear formula i think that's um, it's the simplest solution and that's why we pick pick this and trying to push uh, to, to to a possible limit um, okay, thank you. It was uh, quite uh, quite a speech uh, about this uh, question. It was uh, really interesting to see the new results in this area. Uh, so thank you, Vladimir, uh, for your talk. Thank you all. <laughs>